On today's show, the Atlanta Hawks have 20 games remaining. It's a new month with March, and of course, Quinn Snyder is now in place for Atlanta, and I am joined on today's podcast by my friend and a fan favorite, Tyler Jones, is back for today's show. We'll have a wide-ranging conversation, as we always do, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun coming up on the show. You are Locked On Hawks, your daily Atlanta Hawks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 1423 of the Lots on Hawks podcast. I am your host, Brad Roland, coming to you on a Wednesday evening. And I am joined by my friend, Tyler Jones. It's been a little while. It's March 1st. It's a new month. 20 games to go. Plenty to talk about. Welcome back, my friend. And you know what time it is, Brad. You know what time it is. Do I? Spring training. Spring training oh. for the Braves, baby. I thought, might gone, like, I thought you might have gone like I thought you thought you might have gone like like NFL Combine or something right now. I don't know. I don't know where you were going, but I knew it wasn't gonna be basketball. Hey, Bryce Young for left field. <laughs> Bryce Young. For left. Yeah, Bryce Young's gonna play shortstop. They're gonna, they're the gonna slide, gonna slide Vaughn Grissom to, to left field. No, uh, the Braves are interesting. We're gonna get there. I promise. We're uh, I'm, I'm I'm ramping up for for Braves coverage. I kind of want to go down to Florida and see if I can see some spring training games, but it's uh, it's 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 kind of hard to do that when you cover the Hawks and they're playing right now. And and they're also having news all throughout the week during the not busiest time of the year. No, it was uh, I was I was traveling and uh, it was it was rough last week when they fired Nate. I was traveling and then when they <laughs> did the press conference, I was at the dentist. It's just it's just a it's a tough scene here because you know normally if you cover an NBA team, just bring it behind the curtain a little bit. Like once the deadline is over, you kind of think, okay, there's a limited amount of like emergencies that are going to happen. It's mostly just games. And like every once in a while, there'll be a big injury or something like that. But there aren't a lot of emergency podcasts post deadline, unless you cover the Hawks. And then there's one every Tony, day or something. That's Uncle Tone, baby. He, he moves on his own timeline, Brad. He moves, my man Tone. moves on his own speed. There's big, there's big, there's big tone is one of the rest. Was I, I, I like the, to refer to him as big tone because, you know, he just is the overlord of everything. Um, all right. Well, obviously, people know what's going on. I uh, listen to this podcast, but I know that I, I got at least three because I counted before before, before I, I brought you back in here. Uh, people asking what your for your thoughts on what's going on. So uh, a lot's happened. Nate was dismissed. Uh, Joe Prunty went two and zero as the all time winningest coach of the Atlanta Joe Hawks. Joe Shiesty. Joe uh, Shiesty. My guy, my guy Joe went two and zero. Is uh, still prominently involved. Quinn Snyder was uh, talking about how he was been picking his brain the last couple of days. And then Quinn Snyder is now the head coach. And, you know, that whole sequence happened at a time where we weren't expecting it. Uh, although the way that I would frame it also is like, if this happened in May, if if they had dismissed Nate and then hired Quinn a week later in May, it would have felt pretty normal, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's just the fact yeah. that it happened at the end of, at the end of February <laughs> that made things uh, pretty crazy. So I don't know. What, what, what's your reaction, man? I know, you, I, know, I know you've been stewing. You've paid attention. What's going on? Uh, well, my... <laughs> what, what I, you know the funny the funniest thing is that the report like immediately like you you see these articles about is Trey going to ask for a trade and I'm like did they not do what this man wanted I, I don't understand they, I, 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 I've been saying they, that too I'm about like I don't think people understand truly like I, I think from the outside they think. Oh man, the Hawks are always under have this controversy about them. Trey's gonna leave for a better organization. I'm like, Trey is the organization, and I'm pretty sure. And, and I'll, I'll say this um, about uh, the Trey Nate thing. I do think um, after the blow up they had earlier in the season with the, like I think for really the first time it felt like to me afterwards, like for a couple, like for the last couple of months, um, Kevin's actually brought this up as well. Like this is the most serious Trey has ever taken the sport, like as a professional. And I feel yeah. like he's actually like, I truthfully, this happened while Nate, he was playing under Nate McMillan. And I think Nate got, I think that incident got Trey to focus in a way that he hasn't focused before. It hasn't, the thing is, it hasn't shown up on the win loss column, but like to me, for the long term, like this is this has been a positive stretch of of, of real gains of, of Trey really like 
grinding it out, uh, trying to get trying to get this team back to where they should be and where they need to be. So, like I, like I don't think like I I don't think Nate got fired. Ultimately, to me, Nate got fired because he was seventy two and sixty nine, and this team yes. had bigger aspirations than being seventy two sixty nine. Like if Agreed. if if you're a results based coach and and you know you you talk about. And your rotations are results based, where you're you're playing all your guys heavy minutes, trying to win every game, grind it out, and you're not winning. I mean, you, you just set yourself up to be let go. Like that's just reality. If if the Hawks won more games with Nate McMillan, flat out, he'd still be the probably still be the coach right now. Uh, but you know, the the win locks record is the win locks record. And like that if that's how if you're going to be if you're not going to be the development coach you know <laughs> like that you kind of put yourself in a box where like it's all about results and if you're not getting the results you know we we, we gotta let you go and find somebody else and you yeah. know it is it is what it is with nate and i you know ultimately like it's a rough end for nate and but he was I still continue. He was a really good coach when he was running a different offense. Like, yeah, I mean, that was the biggest I thing. I feel fairly strongly about that. We 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 were on good. we were on it a lot. I mean, that, that's I mean, it's kind of a meme now almost. But like, Nate Nate and his uh, sort of um, I don't even know what deportment or leadership or whatever you want to say it is with with Lloyd's system and assistant coaches was their best combination. Yeah. Because Nate is good at managing people. As much as the attention has happened with with Trey and all that, Nate is kind of you know pretty renowned and respected. And even on the way out, like it's telling. Like sometimes a guy gets fired mid season, and you might get the one quote in a press release about a guy being you know fairly nice on the way out. Everybody was pretty effusive about Nate on the way out in a, in a positive way. No one was crapping on Nate, even all, even off the record. Like there was nobody that was piling on Nate around the Hawks. Like he, front office guys, Trey said nice things about Nate on the way out. They don't have to do that. Like Trey is not someone that always says the right thing, like the perfect thing. And he did. He was like, you know, a lot of, a lot of respect for Nate, all that stuff. Like that does tell you something. Obviously, Hawks fans were ready to move on. I get all that. I had no problem with it at all. But it was telling to just kind of wrap up the Nate thing like – he, he, he was respected still, even though they weren't winning. And I, I totally agree with you because if they had been winning, he does not get fired. And it's not because of Trey. I think I said this on the show, I think in the immediate reaction show, Lloyd getting fired was a lot more about Trey than Nate yeah. getting fired. A Agreed. lot more. So it is what it is. Trey's gonna and, get, and like, I, it seems like Trey's going to get the heat no matter what. Like nationally, I'm sure you've seen yeah. it. And you, and you don't get the coach you, killer. You, well, you, you try not to even like, it's kind of my job to pay attention to this stuff. And like, I mean, 90% of the discussion around the quit hire was focused on Trey and like, oh, make or break for Trey Young. And I get it. He's the star. But like, it, it's just kind of a silly thing. Like, it's not. I mean, I guess I guess it's, it's, I guess it's kind of true, but it's kind of nice. It's really not. It's and like it's, I, I, and make or break for what? Like, I, right. I'm, I'm it, it, it's genuinely confusing because it, it, it pretends that. That I guess Trey is still considered not to be, you know, us i don't know what i don't i actually don't know because like he's a he's a clear-cut superstar like it, that that's just what well, here's the thing so this year he didn't make the all-star team i wasn't outraged by it i, I thought that he should have made the all-star team and i said that i think he is an all-star but the first month month and a half he wasn't good like by his standards he yeah. just wasn't he, he missed he missed a lot of shots but what you said earlier is actually important and maybe not i think understood unless you're like really grinding it out um, like since basically you take take January 1st, for instance, like he is 60% true shooting since January 1st and he's averaging like 11 assists a game. And um, I know this is not like an important thing for a lot of people, but Trey's defense has been a lot better. Like that doesn't mean it's been great, but like you talked about it earlier with, and Kevin said it too, he's just been a lot more dialed in. Like he's playing at a level now the last couple of months. And even before that, I think a little bit where like he's he's quote unquote back like if there's any worry about Trey like falling off which there probably should never been honestly but early in the year he wasn't he he didn't play that well and now he's been playing that well again for the last couple of months and like it's kind of funny I said some I said Trey I wonder what you think about this I said Trey played really well last night on Tuesday for three and a half quarters he was bad late no question about it yeah I said that and I got yelled at for being too soft about Trey and it's like he was bad late. I'm not saying, but the guy, he, I think he had 34 points. Like he wasn't inefficient. Like he, he played well. 
until the end. And that's okay to say, like, Bradley Beal was better down the stretch. That's why they lost. It's fine. It's one game, and I know it's a lot of headlines because it was Quinn's first game. But, like, take a step back on Trey. If you watch him every night, he's playing as well as he's ever played as far as, like, overall game-wise. He's not scoring 50. I get that. But, like, he's playing, he's playing well. And not only is he playing well, he's been part of the t- he's been part of the team. That's what's been like early in the season. He, Brad, I would you would just watch. He's not he would not talk to his teammates. He'd go to the end of the bench, not talk to anybody. And and he gets he was getting into that mood. And it was really frustrating uh, to the start. So he was he was annoying. I mean, it was annoying for everybody to watch. Like his body language wasn't great, and he wasn't playing well. And he all and it was just like. Come on, this is your team. Like you gotta, you gotta take responsibility. So when that blow up happened, I feel like after after the blow up uh, mm-hmm. with him, you know, leaving instead of staying for the game, he's been involved. And I feel like they, like I feel like he and the team actually had a real conversation, and began to real have real dialogue with each other, real, you know, just talking as basketball players about what needs to be done in order for this team to win. And like Trace, Trace a beast, man. Like. You know, this make or break. I don't, I don't know what people talk like. People say that, and then it's it's because nobody watches games anymore. Like <laughs> big picture, nobody watches full games anymore. Like that's just the reality. From you know, national media got nas- nationally. There's just too many like storylines to pick from, and, and we prioritize stuff that you know is not as important. But to really get a understand a grasp of how players are playing or how things playing. Like you really have to watch every game and like see the progression. And like, to me, I've been actually impressed with what Trey's done since that blow up. And he's really won me back. Cause he was really like, Brad, I, I was, I, I, fans oh, I, were angry at Trey. I was beyond. Angry. I, I saw, I saw, the, uh, I saw the tweets. I was there. I was, I was, I was, I was following along with you. No, it's yeah, I, I agree. I, and you know, there is a discussion to be had, and there's, it's always happening nationally and, and occasionally locally too, but like what your limitations are when you have Trey as your best player. And like, that, that's a real conversation that you can have. I get it. It's not a crazy conversation if you do it in a rational way, but like just the framing is, is bothered me just generally speaking. Cause like, you know, I, I would get it if it was like directly tied, but I mean, there's been no evidence and I, you know, I'm pretty close to it. There's been no evidence that like Trey got Nate fired. Like that's not a thing that seemingly happened. So Um, and look, the performance is what it is. And I think that, you know, we all assumed and I said it multiple times that they were going to move on from Nate at the end of the season. So there really is no shame in doing that six weeks early or eight weeks early, whatever it is. Like, that's just kind of a natural, it's fine. Would it have been easier if Nate stepped down or something like maybe, but it just, they they pulled the bandaid off. It, it, It is what it is. And, um, Certainly, I would believe, and it wouldn't stun me if a story came out in you know a couple months that says, "Hey, by the way, the Hawks moved on Nate because they thought they could quit Snyder right then and there." Yeah, that would that wouldn't surprise me at all. And by the way, yeah. that's totally reasonable. <laughs> like, yeah. like I know I know it's not like the most um, I don't know polite thing to do, but Quinn Snyder is the only example of a coach where I would have been cool with that. But like, he is the kind of upgrade that like it does make sense. It's not necessarily the best political thing to do, but like. It w- I mean, the, the Hawks. The Hawks so clearly needed a culture, like an actual, like they needed. I, I've been saying it for you. I'm like, man, they really need Trey Young to be in a system similar to what the Hawks were running with Mike Boonholzer. That doesn't mean it's the five like everybody sharing the basketball. I'm talking about culturally. You know, we prioritize developing players. We prioritize, you know, player health. Like it's been a it's it's a stark shift. Mm-hmm. Bokey's like capped at 20 minutes a night. I, yeah, I, 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 I wonder if that's going to be like moving forward. But, you know, we all yelled about how much Bogey was playing and, and just like the stints he was playing. And granted, there is an advantage that Prunty and then Quinn have now had where Bogey got a week and a half off with the All-Star break yeah. to actually get fresh. But keeping him fresh now is a big thing. And, you know, I know you agree with me because we talked about it a lot. But, like, Bogey has always been an under-the-radar key to this roster as far as wins and losses. When Bogey's good, they're good. Always. It's just, honestly, without fail. It's kind of crazy. Um, but And that's one example. Like, they're keeping an eye on Clint. Obviously, John's had an express minutes restriction coming back from the concussion and all that, too. But, like, you know, they're going to be more modern, it seems, through that lens. Like, 
I understand there's a divide, generally speaking, in the way players are handled in the load management discussion. I'm not going to have that. The Hawks weren't load managing guys at all, which is fine. Like, I think I, I think they probably only had two or three games all year. It was bogey on back to backs. They were resting. But it's not even about rest. It's just like, don't play guys this hard that can't handle it because they're older guys. Can't like, handle it physically. Yeah. Bo- bogey shouldn't be playing 15 minute stints like that. I mean, it's pretty obvious at this point. Um, and even, even Trey and Dejounte, you pointed it out too. I know after that first, I think it was the first game or second game when they both, it was, it was a, a competitive, oh, it was a Brooklyn game. It was a competitive game the whole way through. And they both played like 33 minutes. And I was like, that doesn't usually happen. Like they're usually one of them's going to 37, 38 every night, if not both. And it's like, it's just one game. It doesn't tell you everything, but taking the longer view, it's kind of weird because, you know, this is actually a discussion I wanted to have with you. They're hiring this coach in part, and they're saying it too, on, on, to, to win now and for the future. Like, they're in this weird spot where they're trying to win now still. Whereas most of these times, like, you're trying to hire this guy in season, it's more for the future. The Hawks are kind of walking the line right now of, like, trying to do both. But Quinn's been pretty upfront. Like, they're gonna, it's going to take some time, and they all kind of know that. I wonder what you think about, like, straddling the line, because clearly I'm going to cover every game like it matters, because it does. They're in the playoff race. But, like, how are you thinking about that as far as, like, what matters here because you know every game is a referendum as you well know anytime they lose a game it's like the end of the world or if they win a game they're going, they're going to the finals like what do you think about that like every game now you know, there's 20 games left in the season they have a good coach in place they have a healthy roster they should be able to win but also like that's balanced out with like what's gonna happen long term what quinn's actually evaluating getting familiar and all that <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, and the All-Star break is, of course, behind us. The stretch run is here. It's a perfect time. Download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And new customers getting no sweat. First bet to $1,000 with FanDuel. That means bonus bets coming back to you if your first bet doesn't win. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. About anything you're looking for in the sports world. That, of course, that of course includes stuff like point spreads and totals and money lines and player props. And the Hawks are back in action on Friday against Portland at home. And FanDuel will have every line you need to advance that game. I had a guess right now. The Hawks will probably be favored in that game, if I had to guess, but uh, we'll find out more on Thursday in that one, and we'll talk much more about that game later on this week. But from there, you can find many more exclusive bets at FanDuel, like the 2 by 3 which is whether we actually have two three-pointers in the first three minutes of an NBA game. And also, FanDuel lets you combine bets together for a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Don't wait and don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 bonus bets right now when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. To me, I'm trying to see how how Quinn is going to manage the roster. I'm actually tactically, I, I don't expect the Hawks to be that different than what than what they have been relatively recently. You've seen them do some more new stuff. They're doing a lot more switching yeah. uh, uh, on defense in particular, and I I would suspect that that that's probably going to be something they they try to implement more going forward just because i mean there's a there's a center decision they have to make uh mm-hmm. and like um you know last game aside there's there's nothing a congo could have done about uh last game but like you know congo's been balling uh you know, this is the best stretch of his career and oh, so yeah. like tailoring the defense more towards his style of basketball might be something that they that's probably the one thing i'm gonna be monitoring to see if they still uh, try to do that and uh, also to see um just to see in general how uh if and when they play like how Jalen and AJ look uh, hmm. yeah under under Jalen is a popular a topic Jalen's a, to- a popular topic I, I, right I'll now, say I'll, I'll say this I'll say this about about Jalen because he, granted he didn't play against the Wizards I've been impressed with the, the way he's playing um it's a lot of He's doing a lot of the dirty stuff. He's doing a lot of the effort stuff that mm-hmm. re- he he has to get down first if he wants to take that next step to whatever that next step is for him. But like he's he's consistently doing that now, and that's and and that's to me that's great to see. I'm ho- I'm hopeful that you know he's going to get the opportunity to, to showcase what he can do on the floor because I think like to me I think Jalen's somebody who could really help this team defensively. Um, as somebody who you can put on really anybody and have him just be that big, that other big wing defender, big power forward defender. Cause like he, I mean, 
I was just I, I was really impressed with the intensity level that he played with. It was short stints, short roles for him because I mean the minutes just aren't there yeah. right now. But I, I think he's going to get the opportunity um, because Bay, for as good as he for as good as he looked, his shot looks great and like yeah. I, yeah, and I understand why he's playing a lot, but like defensively, it's it's last not good. Night, last night, I mean, it's, it's been bad every game he's played, but last night I'm like, oh boy, this is some bad tape. Yeah, yeah I mean, the the charitable thing there with Bay is that you know he's played under what four coaches in two weeks or something, so maybe it's maybe it's that. But the the problem is in Detroit, the tape wasn't good on defense defense either, and honestly not to get on the whole Sadiq Bay road, but like he is a step or two slower than people think that he is. Like that was his limitation in college too. And I, I liked his defense more in college than, I, than in the pros, but like he, I, it, it's sort of an ill fated comparison. I wasn't trying to make a perfect one for one, but like I compared him to Gallo briefly last night and they're different, they're different players for sure. Like Bay is much more of a perimeter guy, et cetera. But like, I just trying to make the point of, of a recent Hawks guy who's like a step or two slow, also, they also need him for spacing, and that they're kind of using him the way they used to use Gallo when they when he plays the four. In some respects, um, I, I just think that he's going to be inherently overrated by Hawks fans, and not in a bad way. It's just natural because people, as you all know, just like offense more than defense, and it's just what people focus on. And if he makes threes, I saw it last night. People people were, were celebrating how great Sadiq Bay was, and I'm like, he made some shots. He if you, if you watch him play defense, though, he he kind of killed them like the entire game. So it's a it's yeah. it's tough. And then you throw in you throw in John, who has been restricted the last couple of games. I know you and I don't have to do the Collins thing again because you and I love Collins more than everybody else does. But um, I will be interested to see kind of what you're talking about earlier about the deployment of the roster. Like once Collins is not restricted at all, is he gonna play 25 minutes a night? Because that's what he, that's where he's been the last couple of games. They've been leading on Bay more. If Jalen plays, that'll be even more. Um, you know, it seems like even today I tweeted some quotes out, um, and I think I showed them to you before we started talking. Like it almost seemed like Quinn was signaling that they might be choosing between AJ and Jalen on a nightly basis because he was talking about not wanting to play ten or eleven guys essentially. Like that, that wasn't like flat out said that, but if you read between the lines, it does kind of feel like it's not this is like I think Bay is going to play, so it's essentially between. AJ, who's been playing less, notably, every week or so, he gets to play less and less and less, and then Jalen. And that's okay, but I think a lot of fans, because they were frustrated with Nate about this in the reverse, kind of thought, okay, Quinn's going to play our young guys a lot more. That's not really the rep Quinn has, to be honest. Like, he's more of a development guy than Nate, for sure, but, like, if you go back to Utah, like, there were people there that thought he should have played young guys more. Like, I don't think Quinn's going to come in there and, like, just toss out minutes to the young guys out of, out of uh, just obligation. I think he's going to be pretty discerning and um, his minutes to win. Like I know I'm pretty high in the player development aspects too, but I think he's a fan of player development off the court more than yeah. actually just like forcing guys on the court. Yeah. And um, I think the John, the John thing is, is interesting. It's, it's tough to say too much because I'm, pretty sure we kind of all know the direction they're going with John. So it's kind of like <laughs> for the last three know, years. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of understood what's happening here, but like I, um, I think there are some opportunities uh, um, for him to do so, some of the, I, what I will say, if they're going to run more pick and roll, I think that's going to be benefit him the most uh, where he's going to use him. More. Yeah. That's the thing. If, the, if they use them. Uh, so we'll see. It's early. Um, you know, it's it's too early to call call that that front. But it is like it, it's just it's just in general. It's just but ultimately, like, um, like it's an evaluation period for all these guys. Uh, for all of them except for Trey and Dejounte, basically. Like it's it's Nate. Uh, I think it's a a, a a evaluation to DeAndre. Like this is a different defensive scheme. If the Hawks are switching more, DeAndre has to find a way to make a, a more consistent impact on the defensive end than just, you know, what he's what he's been used to in his role. Same with Capella. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how these guys look, you know, as as the season going on and how Quinn tailors what he's what he wants to do with what the talent that he has on this team. Yeah, and I do think you know not to 
wish injury on anybody. I'm not, but you know, practically like they're probably not going to play with their entire roster the rest of the season. Like someone's probably going to get hurt and that's just the reality. You can't bank on having everybody healthy. And right now Quinn has the, I think the luxury slash privilege of like actually having everybody there to kind of tinker with, but the first rolled ankle and it becomes a lot easier in a lot of ways because yeah. they basically have 10 guys they want to play. And if somebody goes down their their nine minute rotation kind of clicks into place no matter who, kind of no matter who that guy is the only way it wouldn't is if it, is if it was Trey or Dejounte because those guys they kind of have to either play Aaron Holiday or try something else for defense or whatever um, we'll save that for later um, I, I do I do want to know like what their plan is for the guys that we have talked about a lot because you know Trey Dejounte get a lot of attention that's fine but because I'm, you we watch every game I can tell to you about the guys who don't and Hunter's a great want to bring up because Hunter is um <laughs> relics the wrong word but like he's he's a Travis Schlenk guy like yeah that's that's simplistic but Travis traded up for DeAndre Travis paid DeAndre and granted he's got an extension that hasn't even started yet so he's not going he's not going anywhere but we don't know how Landry Fields feels about DeAndre Hunter DeAndre, we don't know about yeah. we don't know how Quinn Snyder feels about DeAndre Hunter about any of these guys really but especially about DeAndre Hunter so um like he's been borderline untouchable for the last couple of years. Like not in a, obviously they would, they would trade him for like a star, but like they were, he was like the guy next to Trey that they were not going to trade basically. And every discussion. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're going to trade him now, but he's no longer like that. He's not protected like that anymore. He's going to have a lot more pressure on him because of the money, because of the role. And look, he is the only guy still on their roster that does what he does. So he like they have, they have other wings, but he's the he's the only wing size player that we know is a good defender on this team, and he, that that kind of guarantees him playing time. But also, it's like, all right, what's he going to be? Because this is a very specific thing too. But Hunter doesn't strike me as like the offensive profile of what Quinn necessarily loves at that spot either. Going back to previous stops, so uh, I'm not saying anything about it like negatively. I just have questions because we just don't we don't know. And that, that's not a negative. It's just we we just don't have that. I haven't really thought about it until like recently that, you know, that whole regime that brought DeAndre in and invested in him is just, it's not there anymore. Yeah. So it, it I'm in mean, like, they just acquired Bay for five second round picks. Like, and I would assume, I would assume the Hawks are interested in signing him into a, into a long-term contract extension. They're, because, they're at least interested. Uh, you know, I, I, I shared some of that. Um, I think it was from Detroit uh, or somebody on national. Like, I, I kind of don't think they're going to extend him just because I think he's going to, I think, I think he wants a lot of money. And I, I just don't, think I mean, yeah, do that. He, he wants but, a lot. I'm, doesn't matter what he wants, he but they wants, like him. Right? They obviously like yeah, him. Yeah. But I, I think they like him. I think he, I think Cam Johnson's probably like Cam Johnson's situation uh, with Phoenix is probably good. Like what Cam Johnson gets in free agency is probably a good actual good. Uh, he's not nearly as good as Cam Johnson. But I was gonna yeah. say the Hawks better hope not because Cam Johnson is gonna get a lot of money. I think. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I'm, I'm I'm saying like hit and also what DeAndre Hunter got like so. Yeah. Uh, you know this past free agency. so like the bay the bay situation also brings and also you know they got Jalen in the wings. I he doesn't play small forward. I understand that, but but he honestly have, could moving forward. I mean, we, but Jalen, but. That the thing with Jalen is defensively he can play the position dissimilar to what DeAndre Hunter does. Like we've yep. seen him in the especially in this recent stretch, him defend more out on the perimeter, and he looks pretty good doing that. So it's he's like, obviously capable of doing it physically. There's no question about that. Yeah. And then you have and then you have Griffin, who isn't going to be a great defender ever, but like is a small forward sized player. Like he's got enough strength I, to play I think, there. I think he has a. I think he has. A, with AJ, it's interesting because I. I he has stretches where he's playing good individual defense, except for like the last, you know, to me, I think AJ is more about confidence on the defensive end and uh, experience like that yeah. where he won't, I don't think he'll ever be like a good or elite. If, I think he could get to good though. I think he can get for his physical profile. And if the Hawks are going to play a different style of defense, I think he can get to be in a, like a solid to good defender in time he's so young like that's the thing he's so young and that's what that the, the exciting thing about aj griffin is his age and how good he is already right now as an nba player so like you can only you can only assume he's going to work on this the 
you know, based on his character profile, he's going to work on the stuff that he needs to work at, which is really uh, defensively more is more technique based and like understanding how how other how elite offensive players try to get to their spots and how to take that away from them. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, and, it, and again, it's not even, I don't think he's going to be like a guy you have to hide forever either. Yeah. It's just not I don't, I don't I don't see him being a difference maker on defense, but it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. necessarily, necessarily have to be. Um, and yeah, with Jalen, not to overstate this. But, you know, I was kind of the one, at least one of the people that was banging the drum like, I get it, Hawks fans, you got, you, th- you guys think he's a three, but the organization viewed him as a big. Like, he's he played the five in College Park. He played exclusively the four in Atlanta. But, again, not to go back to the, to the well on this, but this is a different organization. Uh, Landry Fields wasn't making that call. Bill wasn't. So I'm not saying he's going to suddenly be playing the three all the time, but I, I'm less firm in my convictions about how the organization feels now about – almost everyone because they've, it's all changed. Like the, the coach is different. The lead for an office voice is different. So we'll see on that. I still think Jalen's going to be a four long-term um, mostly, but he is versatile and you want to use that versatility. Same thing with like having him handle the ball more. It's a very small, small sample size, and, but in, with Prunty, like we saw it a couple times, like hit more grab and go from Jalen. And like, you need to, he needs to do that. that. That's one of his best skills. Like he cannot be the player that he could be like Jalen has, I don't want to overstate it, but like, he has starish potential. I believe that, but w- for him to actually do that, it's not necessarily like super likely to happen. But he could do it. You need to like let him do what he could do. Like he, that's yeah. the special things that he can do. Like his special traits are his like end to end speed and athleticism and ball handling. Like he's really skilled and athletic, and like that doesn't always shine in the half court. It, it, it kind of can't. But you gotta have. He has to have the freedom. I think he'll have more freedom now. If I had to guess. Yeah, and he's got great chemistry with a combo and AJ. They Griffin. do play well so together. J- yeah. Jalen, Jalen is like, I'm not concerned. Like, I know he didn't play against the Wizards last night, but like, I'm not actually. He, he's gonna, he's gonna play. I, I, I don't think he's gonna play every. He, he may not play every game. He's gonna play. I, they're not gonna. Ne- they're, they're not gonna not play him. I, I get that yeah. people are worried about that now, and I, I totally. It's one game, and he didn't play. So, I, I don't think that we're suddenly gonna be talking about him never playing again, like 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 last year. It's not gonna go back to that where he's just never playing. It, the reason why he doesn't play is because he's he's a bad shooter. It's and just math. Capella I mean, is it, on the rep. Capella's it, also on the roster. Like if you were like to me, if if Jalen was the caliber of shooter that John Collins was, he'd probably been playing more consistently. I get it, John Collins not making his three pointers, but team still like close out to John still, even though he's shooting like twenty one percent from three. And he's all and um, you know, and honestly though, to your point. This is very simplistic, and this is not how they're thinking necessarily. But you know, you have John, who at the moment is not shooting well, but can yeah. shoot a little bit. And then you have now with Sadiq Bay, you have a different option. Like your wrinkle, to, if you're not going to play John, you're going to go with the sh- with, with the spacer which shooter, more guy, shooting, which is not Jalen. So like that's where you have to fi- you kind of have to force yourself to play Jalen because there's not like an obvious reason to play him. Right now, it's beyond development, clearly. And I think he's, just, he's, not, he's also just good. I mean, this is going to say Sadiq Bey is better right now than Jalen Johnson. I firmly believe Jalen Johnson is a like a much better prospect than Sadiq Bey. Like, I don't, even think, I, don't, I don't think it's close. So if it's close at all, as far as like who's going to play, like I'd lean to the guy that you're going to invest I, I will, in long term. In, in Bey's in defense, uh, his shooting is super valuable. Oh, it is. I'm, I, I'm not I saying he, I can't he should stress, play. Like, no question. The com- combination of the, the trigger that he has, like the quick quick release that he has, and the confidence to just take him. Like yeah, the, the, hope, the hope with Bay, the hope with Bay is like he just has to get passable defensively. Because like yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not trying to assume that this first week is indicative of his defense because it's really been bad. We talked about it earlier. We don't have to belabor that point. If this is actually what he is defensively, it's a problem. I don't think that I'm going to assume that until we see it for a lot longer. And hopefully that doesn't happen. But uh, And he also can play a little bit at the three. like, And that's why they're choosing, kind of, I think, between AJ and Jalen, is that they can kind of just give Bay's uh, Griffith's minutes to Bay and then have that kind of get Jalen back in there. So that's one of the things that Bay unlocks for you is that He's not a good defender at either forward spot, but he can play the three. He's already, he's already been doing that. He's been taking some of AJ's minutes there anyway, and he's also your small, your small ball four option. And I think that they've kind of signaled that they're not going to play Hunter at the four very much anymore, which is fine with me. I never loved that anyway. So because of Bit and the fact you have Jalen and all that stuff. So 
it's a good i mean i think he uh quinn said it was today it was like a blessing and a curse to have this much depth and i kind of had to smile because the hawks just don't have haven't had any depth this year that wasn't and, true that was he he wasn't here he wasn't here in uh well right well, and, and again though it's one of those things where they're healthy right now and so it yeah. feels like they have quote unquote too many guys i, I saw i got one of, those, one of those tweets today and i said that that person's wrong but you get one injury and you don't have too many guys anymore like this is what it's one of those things that you're damned if you do and damned if you don't because we banged the drum. I know both of us did this year that the Hawks' deep bench was terrible because it was, and it cost them games. It just did. Now they have 10, and that's great, but also Quinn doesn't want to play 10. <laughs> so it's like this thing where you can't have it both ways, and you kind of need that. And I think it's honestly kind of nice in one specific way to have Jalen and AJ kind of be their 9 and 10. Those guys are young enough or if they don't play, they're not going to like raise hell. It's like not. they're not going to be like, it's not going to be disruptive. If they don't play. It sucks for fans that want to see them. And I get that, but like, you don't have to, you're not sitting a veteran. You're sitting a guy who has not fully proven himself yet. Either one of those guys, you know, AJ, we all love, he's still a 19 year old rookie. Like I think he's going to be okay. If he doesn't, if he doesn't, if he doesn't play every night, he might not be happy about it. And that might inspire him for the future, but early in the season, he wasn't playing either. Like it's fine. He's a rookie. Yes. Yeah, so that, that, um, the, <laughs> I, it, it's just one of those things where it's like you want like all fans want to see the young guys play but also you know they may it's just the Hawks have a lot of established guys like Bogey, John DeAndre Hunter like those guys are established you know vets in the game now Capella, Okongwu like you know and then you got DeJounte and Trey like and they got to play 34 plus minutes guaranteed so it's a it's a now it wasn't before, um, but you know, through Jalen's development, positive development, because mm-hmm. he, he to start the season, Jalen was not good, like no. he just flat out was not good. <laughs> he was a, he was uh, a, he was a rookie basically at that point. He had yeah, played. Yeah, AJ Griffin was a complete unknown, and they didn't have Bay. Uh Bay wasn't on the roster. So, like, like that's three guys. Now, now the Hawks have a real NBA, like this is what real NBA teams who want to compete at a higher level. Exactly. This is the type of depth that you need, like to survive an 82 game season, 82 games is so many basketball games. Guys. Like it's like, it, you know, it, granted the Hawks haven't been injured, but I would argue the lack of depth has cost them because they haven't had the ability to simply rest guys. Like they've, there've been too many like fatigue losses on the season. And that's hurt them. Like that's, like they can't get in a rhythm because they don't. They like if if one guy it, before this death came here, if one guy got hurt, the Hawks had no chance. Like right, they, they and would, also that also it, it didn't them. matter who that one person was. It, did, it literally didn't matter who it was. No, we we went through this. I mean, they the lack of depth number one, and also I'm, I'm not trying to take um, responsibility away from Nate, but I I think that he was basically told they have to win. And he treated every game like it was game seven in the finals. And that's, I'm not saying that's right. I'm saying that's what happened because it did. Like they were playing guys a lot of minutes. Um, he was essentially just pushing guys as hard as he could push them. It wasn't like yeah, Tibbs I, I, prime, but like it was a lot of minutes for a lot of guys. And now they don't have to do that in part because of the depth. Just adding Sadiq Bay, who like, again, Sadiq Bay is not going to like change your life, but he's an NBA player. Like he's an NBA rotation player. He's a lot better than Aaron Holiday or Justin Holiday or the guys who were playing Trent Forrest was playing real minutes. Like they this team played two weeks with Jarrett Culver like playing a lot. Like Ooh. I was I was in I was in Orlando when the game that I think it was DeAndre and John both got hurt. And I think Culver played like 18 minutes in the second half. Like they they had no depth on the team. And now they have eight guys who are established players and then you have two more young guys who are extremely talented that they want to play. That's 10. So if you get one injury, you're fine. Two injuries, it gets dicey again, but that's every team. So yeah. it is, uh, it's just a lot more um, cohesive. And, you know, the thing about Bay, like that, that was part of the rationale. And Landry said it, like, I think he got asked by me and other people, I think three or four times in that press conference, you know, kind of what the appeal of Sadiq Bay was. And he kept saying depth like over and over again. He wasn't talking. I mean, he did talk about Sadiq Bay a little bit as a player, but like he just kept going back to, you know, we, ju- we just need depth. We need depth. We need depth. It's like, I'm glad you recognize that, Landry, because you did. But it just was Brad, interesting I, to me. 
I actually have a question for you. Because um, I know the immediate, I, I, my immediate reaction was the same when the Hawks initially uh, traded for Bay for five second round picks. I thought that was a, <laughs> a bit excessive. But, you know, I, my, my opinion's actually changed because, like, even with the defensive failings, like, that level of shooting um, combined with his size and physical traits, like, five second round picks f- feels fair to me. Do you, do you still feel like the Hawks? Yeah. Over, like, it's not necessarily, an, I don't know. It's just more of a, it doesn't, the deal never bothered me. It's just one of those things where like, did, were they going to say no to four? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or three? It's one of those kind of funny things. It's like, I don't, um, and somebody, either Jay Crowder or somebody set the market that it was five. Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was Jay Crowder. Somebody and that's fine. Set, set the and, market. and look, I, I do think second rounders are worth something whereas most people just don't yeah, care and I, and I get, right and i and i get it i i get all of it it never bothered me it was just kind of like the it was the principle of when you when you thought it out and i try to explain this too on those reaction shows a lot of what they paid for in my opinion was how cheap it was how cheap he was and True. and not have and not having to trade any of their core guys like core they guys. made an upgrade like the easiest way to make an upgrade to their roster at the deadline which you and I talked about was to flip Justin Holiday into another player because they didn't they didn't need they didn't need Justin Holiday, and but he was the only matching salary that was more than the minimum basically. What they did was essentially that. Now they, it was a two part transaction. They took Bay into a trade exception, but it was essentially that exact thing where they were able to add to the team without trading anyone they actually cared about on the roster, and the price was seven the seven second round picks. And you know, it's a lot, but it's also not crazy because you also get, and this doesn't, this doesn't matter yet, but Garrison Matthews is better than the yep. guys they had. Like yeah, Garrison, Garrison Matthews, Matthews is better than Justin Holiday. I really think that a real rotation player. Yeah. And, and, and we'll, we'll probably never have to care about that. At least not this season. It would take two, probably three injuries to have that, Garrison Matthews play, but like I get it. It was a tax saving move, but it felt like the Garrison Matthews, Bruno Fernando was a future facing. It was, it was also not even just on the court. I mean, that, that helped them too, but they're, they have very valuable contracts. Like they're non guaranteed like they're the Hickey special deals, but like they're, they're non guaranteed multiple times. So like if they ever want to move on, they can, but if they want to trade them, they're valuable. If they just as matching salary, they love Bruno. Like everyone loves Bruno. I don't want to overstate that. It doesn't matter that much. Everyone loves Bruno. Bruno, Bruno and Vic Krejci are beloved. So that helps with the vibes. And then, like yeah, they had they had to do that move to get under the tax to take to take Bay, and that matters, and that's why it cost them two two picks instead of probably one. Honestly, yeah, it should that would have been one if they didn't have to, if they didn't have to save money, and that's fine. So no, I, I I never hated it. I don't think it was like this great masterstroke of like asset management, but it accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. It got them better without having to change anything else. And given, I mean, if you want to be cynical, and I I made fun of this at the time, but it's also true. If you look at what Tony has done with second round picks, if he's going to sell them anyway, like, you know, yeah, I mean, he, he it was fourteen million dollars down the drain for <laughs> of, of cash, of big, cash for Tony. Yeah, hard, oh, uh, so, cash to Tony's wallet. So and I, they, they helps him. I mean, I they helps him a lot. I, I I feel bad because I have a feeling I'm going to get painted as being negative on Sadiq Bay because of his defense, and that's fine. He's I want to say this now: Sadiq Bay is a rotation player in the NBA. And that is not a small thing. Like he's a proven rotation player. He has a really valuable skill that you talked about earlier. His shooting is very valuable, especially at the four. If he's playing the four, he's a very good shooter at the four. Like very good. And that helps everybody. I mean, I still would play John. I think John Collins is a lot better than Sneak Bay, but they're going to probably close some games with Sneak Bay. And that's not going to like enrage me. I get it. I get why they're doing it. And like you kind of alluded to earlier, they're probably going to trade John at some point. They seem to, they seem to want to do that. So I have a Eventually, they're going to have to do it. <laughs> John is going to get traded in the next uh, – after the season. So, I don't uh, – uh, I, I believe that is a likely outcome. And I'm sure everyone's rolling their eyes because that's been said before. I, I think that it's pretty likely he gets traded. But not if not, then that's fine. You and I will be just fine with John Collins being on the roster still. Um, all right. We talked about a lot of stuff. I, I do want to finish out by talking about, like, how good they are because that's – Still, probably the question I get the most is like some form of like, okay, what's the rest of the season look like, and how, uh, how like, what, 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 what seat can they get, and all that. You know, we're recording before the games on 
Wednesday, March 1st. And at this moment, they are two behind Miami and they're three and a half behind Brooklyn and they're four and a half behind New York. And it seems like, and honestly, I think Capella even said it like the 60 is our goal. Like they've been pretty, pretty candid about that. Like they're trying to get the 60. And that's the three and a half games behind that. And Brooklyn is not playing very well at the moment. So, uh, do you, uh, number one, do you care? I, I know you care some, but like how much do you care about where they finish this year? And then also, like, how good can they be? It's 20 games. Can they go 14 and six? Do they have one of their patented Hawks runs in them? I don't know. I don't Listen, know. I don't, I don't know. The Hawks need to play in such a way that they never play the Miami Heat ever again. Well, they're going to see Miami. Not, uh, by the way, they're, they're going to see Miami on Saturday and Monday. Two Listen, of the next three games in Miami. I'm, I'm talking about in, in, a, in a play in tournament setting. <laughs> I, know, I know. They have to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, Brad. To keep, so, to, yeah. keep Trey, to keep Trey out of Miami, basically, is what you're saying? No, to keep the house of, Jim. The house of, ho- the house to, of horror? To keep, to keep Jim out of my life. James? You mean James I, Butler? <laughs> Jim, Jim, James, Jimbo. Like, Jimbo? I don't, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with that man no more in a high pressurized setting. Like, I, now, the, the good, the leave, good thing leave is. Leave him for the Celtics, please. Well, and yeah, I agree with you. And also, I, I kind of think knowing Trey a little, I think Trey kind of wants to play Miami so he could be like, I know I'm not does. this bad. You he know what wanna, I mean? He wanna, he, he, he's, he's the pride guy. He wants to show the world. Cause that, he was, you know, yeah. Cause he was, he was so, he and got again, embarrassed. He, he was so bad never, in that series. We talked, we talked very nicely about Trey earlier in the podcast. We can say this now. He was so bad in that series. It was remarkable. Now. So bad. Got no flat <laughs> for it. Yeah. It was amazing how little, how little he time. got. Um, but yeah. So, so, to your point, if the season if the season ended today, which I hate, I shouldn't say that, but anyway, they would play Miami in the first playing game, the seven oh. eight game, and it would be in Miami. Um, now, if you lose that, you still get an opportunity to get in by right. beating Kevin either Love's Toronto or Washington. Yes, 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 Kevin Love is on the team. That's eight threes guaranteed that game. You're right. I mean, okay. And the thing is, the uh, the the thing is, Brooklyn has <sighs> Brooklyn's been really bad lately, and they're still three and a half ahead of the Hawks, which is why I tried to say to people earlier, like. This is a week or two ago, and now after the all after the All Star break, after um after the Durant trade and all that, I was like, look, the Hawks are better than the Nets, but they were like five and a half games back with twenty two to go. Like you got to be a lot better to pass that team, and they still they still could. They're three and a half games back with twenty to go. That's doable, but it's not a lock. Like they're better than Brooklyn, but we'll see. Well, they they granted they lost against the Wizards. They really can't lose that game against the Wizards ever again. Well, it's a good example because they they play Washington twice next week. Like they have a bunch of so not to deal with the whole schedule thing now, but next we'll cut we'll cut off at five games uh, because then, then, then it's no just 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 a little preview. I'm just <laughs> saying the next five games, right? Because it just came up. Friday's Portland at home. You're favored in that game. Now Dame can beat you on his own. We've seen that. Dame's awesome, but you're favored in that game at home, I would imagine. Then you go to Miami on Saturday and Monday. A split would be nice on the road. Wait, 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 wait. The game's on Friday, so it's a back-to-back? Yeah. Saturday and Monday in Miami. First one's a back-to-back. I'm just saying, so a split. I'm saying you're hoping for a split, right? Well, that's why we got the depth now. We should be fine. Agreed. Then, after that, it's two in Washington in three days. Those are your next five games. It's the home game against Portland, and it's four in a row on the road, Miami twice, Washington twice. That's the kind of – to to your point a second ago – they can't afford to lose these games like they did against the Wizards. They need to go through. Like, they they, 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 they got to they gotta figure out three and two on this next five game stretch, and that's not easy on the road. They need to. They need to go four and one. <laughs> if they four want, and one on the road, they, maybe. All if right. they want the six seed, if they want the six seed, okay, it's it's not it's not enough games to be. Well, and the thing they, is, they, they also they got back home right, and they, play they, Boston. After truth that. be told. Truth be told, they need to go on a run, like five plus game win well, streak. And honestly, that's I the thought it was. Way. I thought it was coming. I thought it was coming. And they, yeah. And then they lost last night, and yeah. they and they should have won last night. I mean, they not to redo the whole thing. They should have won that game. It wasn't like the worst loss I've ever seen in my life, but they should have won the game. They were they were probably the better team. They were winning most of the fourth quarter. It just didn't go their way. And like it's one of those games that eighty two were like it's my job to tell you it's not that bad of a loss, but it hurt. I mean, they needed to win that game. They did. Yeah, they probably win if Porzingis played too. That's that's the frustrating part. <laughs> well, Gaff- Gafford was really good in the second half. I thought that's yeah. I mean, Gafford because Gafford's really good and like 
Uh, did, did he have all three blocks on Trey, or was Kuzma one of those blocks late? Uh, I think I remember somebody. Now. I think the guy who was guarding him also had one. I, not it yeah, wasn't it wasn't Dylan Wright. It was it was I think one of their one some guy. I never. I kind I kind of forgot. I kind of forgot honestly. I mean, I talked about it on the show, but like by the end of the show, I think I forgot that you know the guy Trey fouled at the end of the first half was Delon, who went to the line and made all three. Just saying, just call me with the line and made all three. What a what a bad foul. It was not uh, a good decision by Trey. <laughs> that people were the, 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna like, you know, audit the game, but like DeJounte Murray, that drop off the clip the drop off to nobody, uh was not nobody was trailing him. I'm like I thought the worst I thought the worst play, the worst play of the game, not the most impactful probably, was was the uh, was Trey's live ball handoff to Kyle Kuzma. For the dunk to put Washington up by one with three minutes. That ago. was the game. That was bad. I mean, that was the game. Anyway. That, that lost them the edge. So it, it did not go well. It, I mean, that. that happened. That happens. Like Gaffer, it, I think Gaffer just really. Improved. It's a basketball game. Like it was variance. I mean, no, that's not satisfying to anyone. I promise you. I understand that. I know when I say things, I'm going to get yelled at, and it's fine. But if you watch that last five minutes, it's a lot of variance, man. Bradley Beal made every shot. To his credit, tip your cap. Made every shot, and trade went one for seven. Like, yep, you're gonna lose. It's, it's just what it it's is. Why it's why you don't want to consistently be in close games. You want to be, you know, Win comfortably up double digits so that you don't have that happen. Or be, or if you're gonna be in a close game, being like with Brooklyn where you're up consistently. I mean, they were up consistently against the Wizards. They just couldn't get up to they, well. Yeah, they they led the whole second half until that point, but they were they were only up by like six to nine points they were never able to get that separation okay before we get out of here i have to i'm gonna make you do this you don't have to i guess but uh they're 31 and 31 20 games left let's assume reasonable health because they're healthy right now you got you got a prediction for me eastern conference finals baby oh my lord you're bruno's back it's back all right i'll take it listen that's why you're on the show i don't know I don't not not <laughs> Eastern Conference. I, I want I, if they would have won last night, I would have came up here. I was prepared, that. honestly. I asked you to come up before the game, me. but I now I gotta be I gotta be measured. I have to be measured. Like why? It, I'm measured. I don't. So know. you don't have to be. I'm I measured. That's, that's my job. Um, uh, they. I mean, they get to play sixes in the first round, Brad. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's ooh, ooh, that's wild, uh, honestly honestly I would feel pretty good, and we'll wrap up. I promise in a second. I feel pretty decent about the Hawks against the Cavs or the Sixers. If it's the Bucks or the Celtics, I don't feel as good. But the other two teams, the Bucks, the Bucks are interesting in the sense that the Bucks are the better team. But I do, I actually like the matchup. It's always been a good matchup. I mean, it's always been a good matchup. The Hawks have always played them well. Yeah, yeah. The Hawks have always played Celtics pretty well. Um, Boston's Boston's team would not want to play. Boston would not. They would not ranking it. Celtics is number one. Want to avoid at all costs. Two is the Heat. I don't care. Oh my Anything. god, that's not true. It's Milwaukee. Get I, the Miami, I, I understand. Get the, Brad, Brad, <laughs> get the Miami Heat out of here. I don't want to see the Miami. Heat. If I have to see the Miami Heat on a nationally televised screen, and it's All a right. must-win game, I don't right. wa- I'm not watching. I'm not okay. watching. I believe you actually, because that's something yeah. you would do. Um, do you see how the Heat play out here, man? They they some killers. It, it, the Hawks just a bunch of babies. Who, if, if things don't go their way, they're all crying to the refs. Got, there we go. You know, this is, this is what I needed on the show. They don't have the composure. They don't have the composure, Brad. They, 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 they're Gen Z. Miami Heat, bunch of they are the Miami Heat on our age, Brad. They, they, they some are. killers. They, they grew up. They grew up uh, in the housing market. Like they, they know struggle. Like these Gen Zers <laughs> don't know anything. I need they someone to clip. I need, I need someone to clip you saying they grew up I, in the I, housing I, market. I, I, <laughs> it, it, it's 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 a generation problem. Like I don't want to see this oh generation go up against that Miami team. They they stone blow, blooded killers. Like why would anybody want to play them? Just, I just need they, I need a listener to clip you saying they grew up in the housing market. <laughs> Put that on Twitter. <laughs> the I housing market. <laughs> the recession. Oh, oh my god. That was the okay. Well, okay. the housing market. Well, the housing That's market perfect. is collapsing again. So. Perfect way to put it, put it at the end of the podcast. All right. What, uh, before we get out of here, as always, what's your recommendation? Oh, you got something for the people. What, 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 should they, oh, what should they be watching? I definitely have something. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not wa- – I mean, I'm watching all the anime. Y'all know the anime. Of course. If it's out, I'm watching it. It's probably good. Uh there's a lot of good stuff this season. I can't pinpoint one thing, but 
That's not what I'm talking about. Brad, I am currently playing a remaster of a game that came out in 2004. It's called Trails in the Sky. Okay. Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky. For the people in the know, which are three people currently listening to this podcast, they understand <laughs> this series probably, I think it's like nine, ten or so games. They're all super long. And I'm starting with the very first one to get caught up to uh, the newest one that came out a couple years ago, which was Cold Steel 4. Um, it's probably going to take me the entirety of the year to get through them all. I still haven't beaten the first game. I am 60 hours into the first game. This is, uh, I don't know why I'm doing this. I have a billion other things I could be doing, but I decided I wanted to play a game that came out when LeBron, rookie year LeBron. Because I, I apparently I, I have a thing for nostalgia or something. I don't know. But it's a great game. I'm enjoying it. Um, there you go. But, like, I don't That's know. the recommendation. I'm, yeah. And also spring training baseball. So, full circle. Hold up. Before You're we back. go. Before we go. Is there another Spencer Strider? Like, somebody out of nowhere? I mean, to- no. But if there is, it's Dylan Dodd. Dylan Dodd? That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hearing from people that are smarter than I am about this kind of stuff. If there is a guy that's out of nowhere this year, it's going to be Dylan Dodd, or it's Von Grissom. But that's not really out of nowhere. He's going to start. So, yeah. um, Dylan Dodd, keep an eye. I don't, I'm not recommending. I'm just saying people. This people that know this stuff more than I do are like Dylan Dodd. Okay, I believe you. There you go. All right. Well, thank you, Tyler, for being here. As always, we'll do this again soon. Um, I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about in the coming days. We're both very interested to see how this all breaks down. And if they're, uh, if they're playing AJ and Jalen and maybe Dame will have 71 again on Friday and make this all moot. I, I kind of doubt it, but he's been uh, out of his mind. And uh, you heard here for, uh, here first, everybody, Tower Jones ranks Miami Heat as the second best team in the Eastern Conference. You heard it here on this podcast. Not the, Bo- ex- the nope, second, second best team. team. I don't want to... It don't I'm matter. Kidding. You know what? I'm I kidding. respect the Heat. Yeah, they, they are the second best team in the Eastern Conference. Right, Put you, some respect on their name. They made it to oh. the conference finals last year. They did. They beat the Hawks soundly. All right. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> That's for everybody else. Please subscribe to this podcast. Uh, if Tyler lets you follow him on Twitter, you should, you should at least try. And maybe he'll say I'm yes to that. Uh, follow, <laughs> follow me if you'd like to at BT Roll and follow the show at Locked on Hawks. Subscribe to the show. We'll see you next time.